Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be showing you around my husband's study and as you can see it's a completely different look from the rest of the home so I can't wait to show you around and I hope you enjoy it. So welcome to my husband's study. The first thing you'll notice about this space is it feels very masculine and that was done on purpose because it's a space just for him. And I really wanted it to reflect his taste and style. I remember taking him to the Chelsea Harbour Design Centre and the first thing that really set the tone in this room was this wallpaper. Um, it's a Fornasetti design and it's from Cole and Son. And when I took him to the showroom, I had about three or four choices um, for him to pick between, but I really wanted him to go for this one. And I feel like it's very appropriate because he's Scottish and this is what the sky in Scotland looks like 99% of the time. This room actually took a very long time to design and it was the last room that we furnished when we first moved in. And I think that's because we both wanted it to have a collected feel. We didn't want to just go out and pick all the furniture at once. We really wanted to introduce some antiques in here. Um, my husband grew up in a townhouse in Edinburgh and his family have lots of lovely antiques and I really wanted to make it feel like a reflection of the home that he grew up in. Um, so the first piece of furniture we bought was actually this um, bookshelf and I just love the patina of it and I also love these really thin glazing bars and it was probably one of the very first antiques that we bought together and I think anyone when they're buying antiques feels quite nervous about it, it can be quite an intimidating thing to do but what I told myself and what I tell my clients or my team when we're sourcing antiques now is don't worry about you know the era that it was from is it good value for money? Don't think about it in the context of an antique. Think about it purely as a piece of furniture. If I was buying this piece of furniture today, am I happy with the color, with the finish? Do I feel like it's proportionally a good size? Does it work with the space? Judge it on what you see and what you like. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter if it's the best antique in the world. What matters is that you love it. And I think the great thing about antiques is that you get such beautiful craftsmanship, such beautiful materials, an amazing quality for a really good price. And it's also the most environmentally friendly way to furnish your house because you're basically recycling old people's furniture. I think the desk is the most important piece of furniture in a study and I think the position of it's really key. When I was picking um, the desk for my husband, again this is another antique that we found in Petworth, um, I really wanted it to have a prime position in the room because he spends a lot of time in here. It does normally have a desktop on the desk but we just removed it for today's filming. Um, and I love having a desk where you can look out the window, you get lots of natural light and you've got a nice view of the room. So I think always try and put the desk in a position where you get the best view. In terms of the actual desk itself, it's important it does have storage. Um, my husband's six foot three, so it was quite hard finding an antique desk that wouldn't make him feel like super squashed. Um, but this was one of the biggest ones that I could find. And again, I just love the pattern of it. Um, I'm not sure what wood this is. I'm not sure if it's walnut or perhaps mahogany. Um, but I think it works really nicely with the other um, antiques that I've got in this room. They've all got a really beautiful warm wood. And when I'm picking antiques, I look for a lovely pattern on the wood, a beautiful grain, and um, all of these pieces had that. Finding a desk chair that was practical, comfortable, and worked well with an antique desk was quite a challenge. Um, but when I saw this Chesterfield style one, I knew it was perfect. It's so comfortable, really big. He spends most of his day in here. And I think it works really nicely with the desk. Um, and it was also key that it was a swivel chair. Um, but quite often they can have a really ugly base. So I like the fact that this one has a wooden base. Because the desk is centered in the room, I felt like it was really important that this wall behind me was symmetrical so that it felt balanced. So the first thing that we put in the space was this really beautiful oversized piece of art. It's by Fenella Realms. It brought some lightness into the room. Obviously the wallpaper is very dark and I like to have contrast in our interiors because it makes each element stand out more. I also felt like it went really well with the wallpaper with all these undulating waves in the porcelain discs. It kind of mirrors the pattern of the stormy clouds in the wallpaper. So it feels perfect for the space. 
This is actually an antique card table, so back in the day they would unfold this top and play card games when they had lots of leisure time. That doesn't happen here. Um, but it makes quite a good console side table. And I love the colour of it, and I also love the detail of the scroll with the carving, which mirrors the detail that you'll see on the desk. I have a soil pipe over here, and that makes this corner slightly tighter. So I knew I wanted to find a slightly smaller table, but it still picked out those same kind of details and it would feel balanced in the room. And this one was perfect because it has a similar has a similar octagonal base and a similar base at the bottom with the foot. The colour's very similar. And then by just being a little bit smaller, I dressed it with a matching table lamp, but didn't add any accessories so that it didn't feel cramped. And I feel like now when you look in the space, I love the fact it's not a matching pair, but it does feel balanced. When it came to art, I knew that I wanted to have lots of beautiful different types of art in this room and I absolutely love these sculptures. These are by Giles Caffier and he does really interesting um, vases with beautiful textures. This one's almost like a little coral texture and then I've put that on a custom plinth that we had made. But I need to give you a little trigger warning. If you suffer from trypophobia, look away now because we have a second one and it has this lovely texture that I personally love. Um, but I know a lot of people get the heebie-jeebies with lots of little holes and they can't even look at it. Um, but I think it's just so beautiful and I think it works really nicely with the Fenella Realms piece. I love art with a lot of texture um, and it also has an interesting um, form. But the reason why I picked these specific pieces here is that they kind of fill this niche quite nicely and balance out the space. If I just had the shelving, the library unit, it would have felt a little bit empty and I wanted it to feel very layered and very eclectic. So I think these work perfectly here. When it comes to furnishing your house, I really love to layer different styles and different eras. And I didn't want this to just be all antiques. So I use these really fun chairs um, that I had upholstered in a blue velvet. And the reason why I picked these is I love the contrast of the modern with the traditional, but they also are very functional in the space because ahead of me I have a TV, so if my husband wants to watch TV, he can relax here, or if he's having a meeting, whoever's sat here can spin around and talk to him at his desk. Um, so a spinning chair is a definite must have in here. When it came to planning the space in this room, we wanted to divide it into two areas. Obviously you've got the desk area here, where my husband works and then over here because it's quite a big office we decided to create a little seating area so you've got the chairs that I've already spoken about that have multi-functions they can work for the desk as well this little table is one of the few remaining pieces um, that we kept from his bachelor pad it's a Makassar ebony table and again it's very modern so I love the contrast of that against some of the more traditional pieces um, and it's quite nice to have something that's got a bit of history to it. I remember when I first met him and he lived in Glasgow, he had this in his bedroom, so it's nice that we've still got it. Over here, this is another antique chair um, that I found. It's one of those rickety chairs that you really don't want to sit on. I'll sit on it just to show you what I mean. It kind of feels like and sounds like it's going to fall apart as you sit on it. Um, and no one really does ever sit here, but it it serves the function of filling the space and if someone does need to sit here very occasionally they can. Um, and then when I got it, it had nothing on it. It was just this rattan woven um, base and back, which I think is so nice how the sunlight comes through it. And it's got a really elegant curved back. And then I had this seat pad made just to make it a bit more comfortable. Um, this was actually left over, um, I think, from a sofa that I had upholstered years ago. And then I added a bit of real leather for the piping. Again, very masculine. Um, it's got a nice heritage feel to it. And then this cushion, this was actually a gift from one of my clients um, from about 10 years ago. Hi, Elaine. Um, she's Scottish too, and she gave this to me because um, she knows that my husband's Scottish. And I just think that works perfectly there, and it's got a nice memory attached to it. In this corner, I decided to do another table with a tablecloth, and that works really well because it hides a whole multitude of plugs behind there. And I like how it has, again, that more traditional feel. And then I've dressed that with two chinoiserie vases. I love blue and white chinoiserie, so does my husband. It has a really Ralph Lauren vibe. And also I like how it brings a slight feminine slant in this room so that not everything is overly masculine. And then I've just dressed it with a couple of um, photo frames. This is my husband in his natural element playing golf. He's not a professional golfer. 
he wishes he was. Um, and this is my in-laws with Ava when she was a baby. For the sofa, I decided to do another Chesterfield sofa. It matches the chair on the other side of the room. And I love how it has this really worn, beaten up leather feel, and it's actually really comfortable. It's more of like a one person sofa, but I love sitting here. Um, sometimes when I'm waiting my husband to finish a Zoom call and I want to chat to him about something. Um, and then I've just dressed that with a, um, a throw to break up all the leather and add some softness. And then one of these cushions, and this one's from De La Cogna, and I love how it's got the leather buckles on the side. Again, that's a slightly more masculine cushion, if ever there was such a thing. And then this one I had made up from um, some fabric. This is an old Andrew Martin fabric from years and years ago, long before I had a collection with them. And I think this is called the Prince Charles Tartan, if I'm right. Um, and I love how that just, again, adds like a slightly more traditional feel to the space. These floor lamps are some floor lamps that we were given from our in-laws. And I love the brass base, um, but we just changed the lampshade to a more rustic linen. Um, and I think they work really nicely because there's not a lot of space on either side of the sofa, but I wanted to have some low level lighting so you're not just relying on the down lighters from the ceiling. And by having the floor lamp here, it freed up all this space to display more beautiful objects. This trunk is probably my favorite piece of furniture in the room. It's an antique Louis Vuitton trunk. And I bought it for my husband as a birthday present a few years ago, kind of a selfish present because I wanted one of these in our house and I got to use it as a birthday present. Um, but he loves it as well and I think it works really well in this space because it's breaking up the different heights of furniture. I feel if we had a sideboard that was higher, it would make this space feel a little bit tighter, whereas being that much lower, it feels a lot more spacious. And I made it work for this space because um, originally it would have been too low, it would have been about this height, um, but I had a custom base made which just elevates it slightly and makes it work really well as a side table. And then on that, I've put a couple of books um, underneath the table lamp. I did that because it has these wooden um, beams that go across it and it would make it uneven for the lamp. Um, but I also think it's just quite nice to have some um, books on here. And this lamp is a really old one from David Lindley. And we had this already, but I put it in this particular room because I feel like it works really nicely with the more contemporary coffee table with this Macassar ebony. And then we've just got some photo frames. These ones are both by Addison Ross. It's one of my favorite pictures of Oscar and my husband. Um, and then this is me and Ava when she was a baby. And I used to dress her to match the cushions. <laughs> I'm gonna do that again because I spat. I don't know if you saw it again. <laughs> uh, oh my God, okay. Uh, reset, I'd actually take. This painting, I actually bought this from eBay, believe it or not, and I have this very dangerous um, hobby of buying paintings online. I particularly like buying um, antique paintings. Sometimes I buy them because I love the frame and I think I'm going to replace the painting. Sometimes I love the whole thing. And I looked at this one for a long time and it wasn't expensive at all. And I thought, oh, it's either going to be a complete bargain or I'm going to hate it and I'll end up in the garage. But I actually love it. I think the frame's beautiful. I love the color palette. The guy actually looks a little bit like my dad. But there's one thing to notice about this painting is sometimes it freaks me out a little bit because wherever you're standing in the room, the eyes follow you around. And it, I don't know how it works, but it literally like I'll, I'll walk over here, the eyes are looking at me. And then if I look over here, the eyes are still looking at me. So I can't look at it for too much time because otherwise I'll get scared. For the window treatments, I went for a Roman blind and I picked this um, plaid fabric, which again feels very masculine and traditional. And then I did a border of faux leather and tan, which picks up the colors of the office chair and the sofa as well. And I really love how they turned out. I think they're very simple, but they just add a perfect amount of detail. I absolutely love this little painting here. I grew up in Holland and it feels almost like a painting of Holland, one of the old like rambling streets that you get there. Um, but what really drew me to it, and again, this was another purchase that I made on eBay, um, is this beautiful frame. I love how it's got this faded gilt and gesso frame. And I think this works so well in the space because where we wanted to go for a more eclectic layered feel, I wouldn't normally put this many paintings on this wall. 
but by just having a really small painting here, it just adds that extra level of detail. And if ever you go and look at National Trust properties or stately homes, you'll notice they just put so many paintings on the wall, much more than I have here, but it just gives a little nod to that historical reference of layering lots of paintings. And I really like how it adds some character to the room as well. This painting over here is another oil painting um, of an elderly gentleman. Um, and yeah, again, I just think it works really well with that traditional look that we're going for. And before I put up any of this art, I checked with my husband. He doesn't like check all my purchases on eBay. He doesn't know about half of them. I've got a whole garage of paintings he does not know about that didn't make it into the house. But before I put them on the wall, especially because it's wallpaper, I just checked that he liked it because he's got to look at it all day. And I think he really loves all these paintings and the whole feel that this room has. I love using house plants in any interior and I thought it was particularly important in here because my husband spends most of his days in this room. I wanted to bring some nature in. This one's a fiddle fig and then I've just put that into a wicker basket which I feel looks a nice element of rustic in this room and it really fills the space below the painting nicely. And then over on this side of the room I've added um, a fern which again seems to be very happy here. And I wouldn't normally put a plant this big relative to the coffee table, but because this is an area that people don't sit down a lot in, I feel like it works just fine. And then obviously if they were having a meeting here, you'd probably remove this. Um, but in the meantime, it just adds a nice bit of greenery and some life in here. This little piece of furniture is actually a dog bed and I bought this years and years ago in Paris. We had a Cocker Spaniel for about 10 years and I just had this vision of her lying obediently um, by my husband's feet in this bed, which never happened. She was always in the garden or barking at someone. Um, but it's just a really nice spot if you do have a dog that loves lying down, they can look out the window. And now I've kept it, even though we haven't had our dog for quite a few years. Um, my son Oscar loves coming in here at six o'clock when we're finishing work and he comes in here and sits on here and I think that he thinks this is his little sofa so it's super cute. On these chairs because they're just a solid colour I felt like it needed to have a throw on it to break up that darkness so I used this cashmere throw which is from our collection from Coes and what I love about these is that they're reversible they have this slightly darker taupe colour on one side and then a lighter um, almost cream taupe colour on the other side and I've just got those folded neatly over the arm and it just breaks up that solid block of colour nicely and makes it feel more inviting. This piece of furniture here is from Andrew Martin and it's a piece of furniture that we were given from our in-laws and what I love about it is it's bringing another style into the room. It's slightly more contemporary but I think it works well because it has this leather banding on it which works really nicely with the sofa and the other more traditional elements in the room. And then I've just dressed that above with a convex mirror. The mirror is actually just leaning against the wall, which is something I quite like to do sometimes. And I think in here it works because this piece of furniture is so high, you have enough height for the mirror. And then these are just some um, magnolia twigs that have dried from the garden and with some dried leaves. To be honest, they stay here all year round because I can't be bothered to change them. But right now we're quite lucky because we're moving towards autumn, so it feels appropriate. And yeah, I just think that fits that space quite nicely. And when you look at this wall, I love the balance of the modern and traditional on this wall. These are not pieces of energy you would automatically put together, but I think mixing those different styles and be, being slightly more daring works so well. And it gives you that layered feel, that eclectic feel that you get when you choose different eras of furniture. Lighting is so important in a study. I designed all this lighting with John Cullen and one of the things that they did as well as all the decorative lighting that looks great was they made sure there was good task lighting. So above the desk directly in the middle is a spotlight and that illuminates this work area where if he's working or writing he can see everything even when it's dark outside. I didn't put a table lamp on the desk and I do sometimes for clients it's all down to personal preference, but he has a huge desktop here normally, so it really would have been fighting for space on the desk. And I like to leave a lot of space clear on the desk that you've got room to work and spread out any papers or notebooks that you might have. My husband is one of the most stylish men I've ever met. He has a very classic preppy style, and I really wanted to do justice to his study and create him a space that's equally as stylish and timeless as he is. 
Um, so it sat empty for quite a long time. I remember we lived here for probably a year and there was boxes in here. And it took a lot of time while we found the right pieces. At first, he just had the desk in the middle and the rest of the room was empty. Um, so it was really interesting challenging myself as a designer to push my design boundaries, do something different. And also, I love the collaborative um, side of it with my husband. It's something, it's a passion we both share. And we really enjoyed the process of doing that together. And we didn't have too many arguments along the way. I think the last thing that's really important to think about when you're designing or styling your study at home is just make sure you include some beautiful objects that you like looking at, whether that's artwork or photo frames. You just want objects around you that make you feel happy. When I think of masculine rooms, I think of darker colours, I think of very sort of earthy textures, like I have a lot of leather in here, a lot of plaid, a lot of linen. Um, and it's just, I didn't want to do like a stereotypical masculine room, but my husband loves, you know, very classical design. Um, and I love that kind of preppy Ralph Lauren vibe and I think it suits him so well. So for me, it's about a darker colour palette and some really strong textures. Next week we are going to be filming my children's bedrooms. They get a lot of love on Instagram and I can't wait to share with you a full tour of those, sharing all the suppliers and some design tips for designing kids' rooms. So if you are enjoying this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on the next video and we'll see you then.